So remember that our step one was just to calculate this triple integral, where we have this integral between 0 and 2 pi. We have the second integral between 0 and pi. And then we have this final integral with r between 0 and infinity. And if I start denoting which things are functions of r, theta, and phi, well, we have our trial wave function, psi star, times the Hamiltonian applied to my trial wave function, psi. And both these things are functions of r. And before, this was written as a unit volume. And so if we actually substitute in what the unit volume is, we're going to have r squared. We're going to have sine theta. And then we have all the little volume elements. So we've got dr d theta, and finally d phi. And of course, this d phi is different than our trial wave function. This is an angular coordinate as opposed to a denotation of our trial wave function. But then what we can do is just take all of these various um, units and stick them in front of their appropriate integrals. So now we can actually solve this. And the reason is because we just finished solving this application of the Hamiltonian to the trial wave function, which is this piece that I'm going to put into there. And so what this does is then we've done already part of this integral. So if we group together these terms, we're going to have the integral over 0 to 2 pi. Well, this is the part that has to deal with the phi coordinate. We then also have our integral that's between 0 and pi, and this is our other angular coordinate, but this is in theta. So I have my sine theta, d theta. And then finally, we have our part of this integral that deals with the r coordinate. And so this is the part that goes the complex conjugate of my trial wave function times the Hamiltonian applied to my trial wave function times r squared times dr. So we know that this integral, this definite integral of d phi between 0 and 2 pi is just 2 pi. We also know that this definite integral over 0 to pi of sine theta is just going to be equal to 2. And so our final thing to do is just to evaluate this integral of our, the complex conjugate of our trial wave function times the Hamiltonian applied to our trial wave function times r squared dr. And so if I were to write this out in full, I would get the integral between 0 and infinity times, here's the complex conjugate of my trial wave function, e raised to the negative alpha r squared. And the reason why that there's no change to this from what it was before is that it's a real function. There's no complex part, so there's nothing to change. To that, it's going to be multiplied by this Hamiltonian applied to my trial wave function, this thing that we just calculated a second earlier. So I've got minus 2 alpha squared h bar squared r squared divided by mu times e raised to the power of negative alpha r squared. To that, I'm going to add 3 alpha h bar squared, all over mu, times e raised to the power of negative alpha r squared. From that, I'm going to subtract e squared, which is the elementary charge squared, divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r, e raised to the power of negative alpha r squared. And all this is going to be multiplied by the r squared dr that we had as a part of our volume element. Continuing forward, I'm now going to multiply this 2 by 2 pi together to get a 4 pi. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to distribute in this Gaussian term and this r squared term into this long um, expression that I have in the middle. And so what I'm going to get is the integral between 0 and infinity. And then my first term is going to be minus 2 alpha squared h bar squared r raised to the power of 4 divided by mu. And this is going to be times e raised to the power of negative 2 alpha r squared. And where this 2 comes from is that when I multiply this Gaussian term with this Gaussian term, that's a part of this first um, component, when you multiply exponentials together, you add their exponents. And so because I've got minus alpha r squared, minus alpha r squared, then when you add them together, you get minus 2 alpha r squared. To this term, I'm going to be adding 3 times alpha h bar squared r squared over mu, again times e raised to the power of negative 2 alpha r squared. And from that, I'm going to be subtracting off e is in the elementary charge squared divided by 4 pi epsilon naught times r times e raised to the power of negative 2 alpha r squared. 
and to that is still going to be all multiplied by the volume element dr. Now to evaluate this, this integral, and really what we're looking at is just the integral of three terms and then summing them together, what we can do is we can just go to our integral table and really the piece that's doing the integral is this part that I'm trying to check her out, which in the first term it's the r raised to the power of 4 times e to the negative 2 alpha r squared. In this middle term it's the r squared e to the negative 2 alpha r squared. And in this last term it's r times e raised to the power of negative 2 alpha r squared. The rest of the stuff that's out in front, which I'm going to hash in blue, all of this stuff is all constant. So these things are going to be stuff that I'm just going to write out in the front of um, all the evaluations of the integrals that I've got dashed out in red. But the point is, is that I'm going to go to, again, a standard integral table to find the solutions to these integrals. So I'm going to have 4 pi out in front, and then I'm going to have that times minus 2 alpha squared h bar squared over mu. And then the evaluation of that integral in the red part, that's just going to be 3 over 2 alpha squared times 2 raised to the power of 3. And then that's going to be equal to, or also multiplied by pi over 2 times alpha square root. To that, I'm going to be adding, and this is the evaluation of the second integral. I'm going to have all the constants, 3 alpha h bar squared over mu. And then the evaluation of the integral in the red part, I have 1 over 2 times alpha times 2 squared. And then I have this pi over 2 alpha square root term. And then finally, in the third term, I have all the constants. This is the elementary charge e squared divided by 4 pi epsilon naught. And then the part that's hashed in the red, the evaluation of the integral, the r e to the negative 2 alpha r squared gives me 1 over 2 times 2 alpha. And so the reason why these terms, they're actually written in terms of numbers and I'm not applying the fundamental theorem of calculus is simply because I have a definite integral here. And so these terms that are in red, they have taken that integral into account. They are the definite integral using these bounds of integration for these terms that I've got hashed out in red. And where they came from, again, was just from an integral table. Finally, we can just simplify this expression to get our final answer. So I'm still going to have my 4 pi out front. And the simplification of these terms leads me to write minus 3 over 16 h bar squared over mu. I'm still going to have this pi over 2 alpha term. And this is crossing off a bunch of the constants that I have in front of this term. To that I'm going to add 3 over 8 times h bar squared over mu. And again I'm going to have this pi over 2 times alpha square root term. And then finally I'm going to subtract off e squared being the elementary charge squared divided by 16 pi epsilon naught alpha. The two terms here that have this root or yeah, this root pi over 2a, we can join them together. So I'm going to have 4 pi. The common factor is this 1 over 16. And so then here I'm going to have 3 over 16. And this is because I'm going to have 6 over 16 minus 3 over 16. It gives me 3 over 16. h bar squared over mu. Pi over 2 alpha, all square rooted. Minus e squared being the elementary charge squared, divided by 16 pi epsilon naught alpha. And then finally I can then multiply through this 4 pi. What that leaves me with is 3 over 4 h bar squared pi raised to the 3 halves. And that's going to be divided by mu times the square root of 2 times alpha. From that I'm going to subtract off e squared, the elementary charge squared, divided by 4 times epsilon naught alpha.